Absolutely not. How can you be a religious person and do these kind of crimes or commit these kind of crimes? So are these Zionists religious people? They're not. They can't be religious people. They try to claim Judaism for themselves, but Jewish rabbis repeatedly disown them. Jewish rabbis clarify, just like the Muslim ulama clarify, when there's a crime committed in the name of Islam, Muslim yeah. ulama come out and they condemn those actions. And they say, look, these actions not in our name, not in the name of our religion. Likewise, there are Jewish rabbis around the world. They are condemning Zionism and the Zionists and the IDF and Netanyahu and his entourage. These people, some of them are atheists. They don't even believe in God. They believe in the promise of God for some reason, okay? I mean, when you ask these Zionists, some of them who are atheists, do you believe in God? No, we don't. Do you believe in his promise? Yes, we do. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't make sense. It's ironic. They always claim right over this land because in the Bible, we have been promised this land. Okay, this is such an absurd argument. It's unbelievable. By that virtue, all Western countries have to evacuate. Okay, all major, the U.S., has to be evacuated. It has to be given back to the Native Americans. Australia has to be given back to the Aborigines. And Canadian First Nations, they must claim back their country from the Canadians. And South African, you know, like, look, there are so many examples. This idea is so absurd, it's unbelievable, that you have a verse in the Bible that was possibly put down 2,000 years ago for a different people. They weren't even, they weren't the same people. Didn't, didn't follow the same culture. Their religion was different. I can challenge any <laughs> scholar of Judaism on the planet that their religion was different. They were a different people, okay, who were, pro who were promises. And the promise was made to the seed of Abraham, to the seed of Abraham. That means Ishmael and Ishaq, both the father of the, uh, the Israelites and the father of the Arabs. So the Arabs have as much right over this land as do the Israelites if they want to use that passage in the Bible, okay? So they are not religious people. They don't care about religion. They don't care about laws. They don't care about moral values. They don't care about decent uh, ideas. They don't care about these things. If they did, they wouldn't be firing rockets into civilian buildings, killing thousands of children. So how did this all start? You know that this is a story of 75 years. Yeah. So can you tell us what happened from the beginning? Okay, now that we have clarified that the, the, the Israelites were heavily, heavily persecuted by the Romans, okay, and um, the Temple of Solomon, what we call Masjid al-Aqsa was destroyed twice, first by the Babylonians, then by the Romans, and then it was never built again. And the Israelites were not allowed to live in the land of Palestine on pain of death. If they were found in Palestine, they would be killed on the spot by the Roman authorities. And then later on, Romans, as you know, became Christians. The Roman Empire, including the emperors, became Christians. So the Christian Romans also persecuted the Jewish people because they accused them of being the killers of God. So the Israelites found themselves to be in a very difficult situation, okay, throughout the history. When did they get respite? When did they feel a sense of ease and comfort and protection? When Islam came to power. Allahu Akbar. A lot of people don't know this. A lot of people don't have an idea. You know, this recent Zionist propaganda, uh, okay, has given this impression to the world that Muslims are inherently anti-Jewish. And because that is the case, we need a state for ourselves to protect ourselves. We need nuclear weapons, we need jets, we need weapons, we need technology to keep all these barbaric, bloodthirsty Arabs uh, at bay. Okay, because if we don't have these things, they will come and eat us alive. They will destroy us. But it's actually the other way around. The reality is the other way around. What the Israelis are doing to the Arabs and the Palestinians in particular is exactly what they are accusing the Arabs of trying to do to them. But there is no reality to it. Zionists, this is why I believe Zionists, Zionists are not only a bunch of liars, they are spin doctors and they are manipulative, malicious uh, propagandists. Okay, I'm using these terms very responsibly. Okay, because I have reasons to say these things. And academics have written plenty of stuff on this. To, who protected the Jewish people? Who gave refuge to the Jewish people? I would like to quote one particular passage from an academic, an expert of Jewish history from Chicago. And what is his name? His name is Dean Philip Bell. Dean Philip Bell is a very, I mean, I can quote so many authorities, so many Jewish rabbis who pay lavish tributes to the Muslim civilization for protecting them, for giving them refuge, for giving them breathing space. You know, the best Jewish 
scholars, the best Jewish historians, the best Jewish intellectuals, theologians, rabbis, poets, politicians, generals, prime ministers, physicians, you name it. And the list goes on. Scholars, academics, translators, book producers, philosophers, best Jewish intellectual element was born during the Muslim period. In Spain, in the Middle East, and uh, even as far as Central Asia, the Jewish people found refuge under the rule of Islam for over a thousand years. And I will quote one particular scholar uh, in this regard. Okay, his name is Professor Dean Philip Bell. He is the professor of Jewish history at Spertus Institute of Jewish Studies in Chicago. He states in his book, Jews in the Early Modern World, published in New York in the year 2008 on page 25. He states, and I quote, Jews under medieval Islam never suffered from the same general negative perception as in Christian West. Despite regional variations and high medieval political instability in medieval Islam multi multicultural environments combined with active engagement in science and literature led to something of an Islamic golden age for the Jews, at least according to most historical, uh, historical accounts. It has been primarily in the context of recent political developments that the once assumed positive views of Jewish life under medieval Islam have been seriously questioned. So this professor of Jewish history from Chicago, a non-Muslim professor, he's writing that Jews lived under the protection of Islam throughout the Middle Ages, throughout the medieval period, which is like a thousand years. And he's saying this was the golden age of the Jewish people. This is when the best Jewish scholars and luminaries were produced, including